Okay, so what we're going to take a look at is refraction through a rectangular glass block. And then we're going to look at predicting what the various angles are going to be using Snell's law. So the first thing I want to do is actually take a look at what we can observe using a rectangular glass block. So I'll try and get overhead uh, so we can see this. So important things to notice here. Uh, unfortunately, we're getting some interference from the camera light, but there we go. So the first thing to notice here is that this light over here, this is the out, final outgoing ray, is parallel to this incident light here. So these two are parallel to each other. Now I'm not sure about my camera angle, so it might not quite look like that, uh, but they are. So these two are parallel. And then what we see in between, so at the first boundary, we see light refracting towards the normal, so it's bending this way slightly. And then at the final boundary, we see it bending away from the normal. So that's our second observation. So incoming and outgoing rays are parallel because this is a rectangular glass box. So that only happens with rectangle glass box. At the first boundary, it bends towards the normal. Second boundary, it bends away from the normal. So let's step away from that for a second and take a look at Snell's law. And then what we'll do is we'll make some predictions based on measuring the initial angle of incidence. So first of all, Snell's law, let's write that down. So Snell's law is this one here. Okay, so in terms of defining the terms on here, so M1 is the refractive index before the boundary, I is the angle of incidence, N2 is the refractive index after the boundary, and R is the angle of refraction. So some useful data for this experiment. The refractive index of air, we say is pretty much one. Is it, it's, air, air light travels at pretty much the same speed in air as it does in a vacuum. And the refractive index for this glass, if you look it up online, so refractive index is a fixed value, it's about 1.5, okay? So, this is what the data I'm going to use to make predictions. So the first thing we're going to need to know is uh, what our angle of incidence is and so, so forth. So we need to take some measurements. So I'm just going to quickly draw around the glass block in case I need to put it back later on to take some kind of measurements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exaggerate this. So give it a very exaggerated angle of incidence. So our light ray is coming in here. It strikes, I'm marking where it strikes the block. So I've marked this point here. I'm gonna mark where it leaves the block. There, and then where the ray goes afterwards. Okay, so now I can take my glass block away and my light goes away and turn it off. So what I can then do from this diagram is actually sketch where the ray went. And I'm also gonna need to add some normal lines. So first of all, let's do where the ray went. The ray came along here went along here and then ray goes along here. So all angles in optics are always measured to the normal. So I'm going to sketch some normal lines in. So I'll try and do it. So this is our first normal. This is our second one. So again, let's just label that. Um, so this is our first boundary, so I'll call that boundary one. This is our second boundary, so I'll call it boundary two, there. So what we've got is the complete path of light all the way through our glass block. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the angle of incidence at the first boundary, and then we're gonna use that to make predictions for all of the other angles, and then we can see how good our prediction is. So this, so we are measuring the angle to the normal. So I'm going to measure this angle in here. So that is, let's get that lined up properly, 42 degrees. Okay, so let's label that in there. So this angle in here, 40 degrees. This is our, I'm going to call this R1. So this is our first angle of refraction. I'm then on this side, I'm going to call this one I2, and let's call that R2 so I can refer to them later on. So the first thing we're going to do is predict what R1 should be and we'll experimentally see how accurate that is. So let's do that. So 
So coming back to our equation, we now have another piece of data. I1 is 42 degrees. Okay, so in this particular scenario, before the boundary, it was in air, so N1 is 1. After the boundary, it's in glass, N2 is 1.5. So what that means is we can then, if we rearrange our expression, we should be able to find what R is. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sine R the subject. So I'm going to divide both sides by N2, because that leaves sine R by itself. So now, now I'm actually going to calculate what sine R is. So the, the material before the boundary is air, so we're going to put 1 in. I is 42, so we're going to times that by sine of 42. And then we're going to divide that by 1.5. And that should give us our um, sine of R. So we haven't calculated R yet, we've calculated what sine of R is. So we're going to do uh, 1 times by sine of 42. Whereas we're getting a lot of glare here. So 1 divided by sine of 42, and then divide that by 1.5. Oh, I've accidentally done 10 times. Let's get rid of that 0 there. So 1 times sine of 42 divided by 1.5. That comes out as... 0.446 blah, 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 blah. So this is what sine of R is. So if we want to find what R is, we have to do the inverse sine. So we press shift, sine, and then we press the answer key. So down here at the bottom. So it's going to take the inverse sine of our answer. So you can see our, our angular refraction should be about 26 degrees. Okay. So that means R is about 26 degrees degrees, roughly speaking. So let's actually try it out and find out how much does experiment actually match reality. So let's measure our R in here. So we need to measure this angle and we need to measure it again, to, as always, to the normal. So going in here, there's 25. What do you know? Exactly 26 degrees. So for our first boundary, our experiment matches with the theory predicted by Snell's law. Now to test it at the second boundary, we need to uh, know some math rules. So these two normal lines are parallel to one another, which means these two are alternate angles. So actually, now we know what R1 is, we now know what I2 is. So if we go back to our uh, calculation page, Okay, so we know that I2 is equal to R1, which we just calculated to be 26 degrees. So again, let's come back to our Snell's law. So this time, we want to calculate what R is again, but this time we're going to do it for the second boundary. So I'm going to do the same step. So I'm going to do sine R is N1 sine I over N2. Now what's different here is at the second boundary, it's going from glass into air. So that means this time the N1 is glass because it starts, the light starts in glass. We're going to times that by sine of 26. And now we're going to divide that by one. So essentially we just do 1.5 times sine of 26. So let's actually do that calculation. So we're going to do uh, 1.5 times by sine of 26, and we don't need to divide that one, so that's what, 0 0.657, and that means that R2, what we're going to do is shift, sine, answer, close those brackets off, and that comes out as 41 degrees, which you'll notice is roughly the same as what um, I1 was earlier, and this is why our lines are pretty much parallel because those angles end up being the same. So let's actually try it out. So we're expecting R2 to be about 41 degrees according to our calculation. You can see that's come out as, so I'd say that's 42 degrees. So you can see within experimental uncertainty, again, our practical matches up with what Snell's law predicts. And so that's just an example. Um, so the key things to take away from this are, first of all, what do we actually observe here? The fact that we see it bending towards the normal and then away from the normal. Second thing is we've got this line is parallel to this line here. And then the part with Snell's law is just a nice layer on top of that showing mathematically 
how we make predictions about what light is going to do. So this equation, this Snell's law, this um, n1 sine i is n2 sine r, can be used to model anything with refraction. So that's really useful and that's why we've looked at that.